Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Nunez and today I'm going to be teaching you how to characterize pin diodes using Cadence's microwave office design environment. So, to start, you're going to need the SPICE model from your vendor. Specifically today, we're going to be working with Makeums MADP008120 12790T. This is a very, very specific pin diode. I'm currently using this in my work. I had to get in contact with Makeum through their customer service line and request from them this SPICE model. Specifically, as you can see here, it is a collection of measurements under certain specific parameters. Uh, here they measured a total of five different MADP uh, diodes took the average of the quantities and then have listed them across the bottom here in yellow. Also, there is some additional information at the bottom, which is the package capacitance, the inductance of the wires, the junction capacitance, and the junction resistance. We're going to be using all of these values in order to help us characterize the diode in question. Now, specifically, I received some help from AWR, specifically from Cadence, um, wonderful gentleman, Mark Suffian. Uh, if you ever get support from Cadence for AWR, you more than likely will be interacting with Mark. He's a great guy. Uh, so thank you, Mark, for the information. I'm going to be making this video so that hopefully you do not have to reach out to Mark and Mark can spend his time uh, helping other individuals with their work specifically um, AWR so all right now let's see here we're going to analyze the file that Mark sent me and I'm going to explain why everything looks the way that it does and we're going to very quickly just explain how this works now let's be clear this file is a modification is a modification of the diode characterization example file in AWR and we're going to take a look at that um, in a moment but first we're going to analyze the one that Mark sent because it's already built and it'll give us a chance to kind of understand the general techniques that we're going to be using here uh, so that it's easier for us to effectively um, go ahead and do the right thing when it comes time for us to characterize diodes that perhaps are not included in the software or do not have pre-existing SPICE models uh, to do so. So this project, this video, assumes that you already have a general understanding of how to use AWR Microwave Office, uh, Cadence Microwave Office, whatever you want to call it at this point. It's uh, changed hands a couple times in the last couple of years. Um, if you do not know how to use AWR, then feel free to go to my profile. There's a three-part series where I teach you effectively the basics of AWR, going through EM simulations, method of extraction, um, and a whole bunch of other really, really good stuff that'll get you up and running in AWR doing circuit simulation, which is the effective bare minimum that you need to know how to do uh, in order to characterize pin diodes. So here's the thing. This design is made up of one main design, one top level design and one sub design, specifically diode here that I am moving my mouse around is made up of a two port setup using the S diode component. On either side of S diode, we have an inductor and a capacitor. And these two inductors here are effectively uh, represent the bonding wires that are used to bond the diode die to the actual external pins on the package of the diode. Then we have these two capacitors here on either side of the diode, which represent the package capacitance of the device. Now, the, all of these values are given to us in the SPICE file. So if I open up the Excel spreadsheet that was sent to me, you can see that over here we have the bonding wire inductance and the capacitance of the package listed right here. And these are the values that are put into the AWR project. And we have an empty project over there that we're going to be working with. But effectively, these are the first, this is the first part. So you're going to take an S diode component as a little bit of a refresher. You can hit the element button up here that I just clicked and it'll pop up this wonderful window right here. 
and you can go right ahead into the search bar S D I O D E and it will pop up the spice non-generic junction diode model hit OK and it'll drop it right in, into your design in this case we already have it here and so that work is already done for us in this case mark went ahead and defined the package capacitance as a variable and the inductance of the bonding wire as a variable simply so that we do not have to update update these designs individually and they will just simply propagate the, the changes throughout so if we are characterizing some other kind of diode and it has a different package capacitance and a different bonding wire inductance we'll simply just be able to go right ahead change these two variables and it'll propagate the changes through this sub design that is being used um, for the sake of characterization so now next thing we use the sub circuit the sub design okay over here and we connect it through these bias T's. These are ideal bias T's, okay? So in real life, you can buy generic bias T's that um, have a certain amount of inductance and capacitance and a certain S parameter behavior. But in this specific design, all we're doing is just characterizing the diode. Uh, it's kind of insinuated here in AWR that you're going to have the S parameter file for your bias T and you're going to be able to do a separate project, a separate design, a separate simulation, taking into account the S parameter behavior of your bias T's in the presence of the S parameter behavior of your diode. So an entirely separate um, simulation. Now, uh, AWR, Cadence, whatever, if, if you're watching this, I would really appreciate if you could add in a special bias T component that where you can define the biasing inductance and the biasing capacitance specifically and use that instead of an ideal bias T. Um, I don't think that it would take very much to make that happen. Um, it would just take a little bit of doing. The software is already amazing. So how about you make it just a little bit more amazing and make it work even better. So as you can see here, we have our DC voltage which is swept from zero to five, or specifically it is, uh, there, there are two values here, zero and five. It's not swept from zero to five. It's literally changed from zero to five um, directly as a vector. So it'll run the simulation for zero volts and it'll run the simulation for five volts. So effectively the grounded uh, reverse bias of the diode and the five volts forward bias of the diode to give us two different results through the bias T as is expected. Effectively, these bias T blocks tell AWR that we're going to be combining RF signals in the presence of DC signals. So we're effectively going to be running an RF simulation in the presence of a DC biasing that is going to be uh, affecting this diode in a specific way. Now, in comparison to prior AWR simulations that you may have seen on this channel when we were doing other stuff like the Wilkinson power divider in the three-part beginner tutorial for AWR you might notice the difference here is instead of using these regular ports like what we see here in the diode circuit in the switched diode circuit the main top level design we're using this uh, source port so if we go up here to the different uh, sources that we can use you see port source is one of them and and one of the major reasons why we're doing this and and mark had to inform me of this is because there's two types okay two types very generally speaking of simulations when you're talking about awr so as far as the rf is concerned you're going to have a linear simulation and a non-linear simulation effectively linear components are non-linear components and the fact of the matter is that diodes are non-linear components so in order to do a non-linear simulation you're going to need effectively non-linear components in this case, this diode, and you're going to have to feed this nonlinear component from this port source by defining a certain amount of power um, if it'll let me move the window. So if, if you double click, like I taught in the three part beginner tutorial, uh, it'll bring up the properties window. We can see here the properties of the port source uh, allow us to not just define the port impedance, but it will also allow us to define the power, in this case, minus 30 dBm. So and then here on the bottom, we have the DC bias. All right. So the next part is if we go to the diode design, we double click on it on the S diode. I'm going to bring this over here, put it in the middle. Let's actually make it a little bit bigger. And we're going to hit second to bring up the secondary properties. You'll see it'll bring up all this stuff here. Oh, my God. It's so confusing. Um, 
don't worry about that at all. All you're going to do, all you're going to do is you're going to leave everything default. Okay. You're going to pull up your Excel spreadsheet. I have two monitors, so I can just move this over to my second monitor, which you just saw me do. And what you're going to do is you're going to go through. Okay. And you're going to fill in every single thing. Okay. You're going to fill in every single thing that you find in the Excel spreadsheet. You're going to fill it in, in the properties window. So the first quantity that's given is N, whatever that means. I don't know. I'm not a diode engineer. I'm just using this diode. Okay. So you're going to look for N. Where's N? N is right here. 1.142. Obviously, Mark Safian already sent me the, the project file. It was already prepared for me. Um, so obviously this matches, right? My Excel spreadsheet says average 1.142. And here you're going to set to 1.142. Series resistance. What is the average? 2.007. You're going to look for series resistance. RS 2.007. You're going to go through. You're going to punch in all the information that you have in your Excel spreadsheet. Okay. You're going to punch it into here. Good stuff. Now, once you've done that, the... Diode characterization project, which I'm going to show you now where you can find it. You go to File, Open Example, go into the little search box, type in Diode, and it's the second result, Diode Characterization. Okay, and we're going to open that up in a minute. But first, I just kind of want to go through and explain the kind of setup here um, that we're doing. So under Graphs, you'll see that we have a singular graph, which is graphing the... LSSNM port. Oh, God, that is confusing, right? So here's the thing. Okay. The standard port simulation, which you'll see me here clicking through things, is a linear simulation, and we're simulating a nonlinear component, which means we're going to need a nonlinear measurement. So if you go under nonlinear power LSSNM, you'll see that here it says large signal S parameter. That's what LSS means. Okay. You're going to choose your data source. You're going to say port 2. So we're going to the second port from port 1. You're going to choose the harmonic index as whatever your frequency of interest is in this case, right? So we're setting the sweep frequency, FDOC. This is the document frequencies used for x-axis. We're setting the harmonic index to 1 for both. So to and from, we're setting the harmonic index to 1. And then here you'll see dcv.v1. There are two values. This is for the biasing voltage. And you can set this to plot all traces, and it'll plot both S21s here, so both insertion losses, um, the 0-volt reverse bias insertion loss and the 5-volt forward bias insertion loss, making sure that we're magnitude and dB and red OK. And then you're going to hit Analyze up top. Let it run for a second. I'm going to maximize this window. And here we see the two curves. As you expect, the forward bias, very low insertion loss, and the sorry, uh, and the reverse bias is going to have a lower or, or higher insertion loss, right? You always get confused with that, right? Um, a higher insertion loss here. You know, very low at the low frequencies, 0.1 megahertz all the way up here to ju just above 10, negative 10 dB over here on the, t on, on the high side. And then here in the middle, which is usually where, at least myself, where I do a lot of my simulations, um, here from like 2 up to about 6, we see that we're between 20, you know, 10 and, and 20 dB of, is of isolation or, or um, insertion loss, right? So this is basically how you do this. So... I'm going to hit pause real quick because I just got an email to my work email. We're going to see what, what happened with that. And um, I'll be right back. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pull this to my second monitor. We're going to pull up our empty project file open example. Again, diode characterization is the one we're looking for. We're going to hit OK. It's going to pull up the diode characterization example file. I'm going to go ahead here, close that. So what do we have here? This is what the diode characterization file looks like 
by default. Okay. You can see here on the left under the uh, project, Explorer, circuit schematics, diode characterization, pretty much all of these use the diode DUT device under test. We're going to go ahead and double click on that, which pulls up the underlying schematic. Okay. So effectively now, kind of where are we? Well, we know that from our simulation before, sorry, I'm moving some cables around here on my desk so I can actually uh, pull up my keyboard. What you're going to do is you're going to double click on this S diode parameter. You're going to fill everything out. And specifically here, what you're going to do is you're going to pull these ports aside because we need to add the bonding wires and the package uh, capacitance, junction capacitance, package capacitance. And here you're going to go element again up here. If you do not know how to do this, please watch the three-part beginner tutorial. We're going to type in cap for capacitor. You're going to find capacitor close form. We're going to drop one of those in there. We're not going to worry about the value element. We're going to hit I, IND for inductor. Scroll down, and you're looking for the standard IND, IND, inductor close form. Okay. And you're going to go ahead and just uh, set this up. So... Um, yeah, so then just copy and paste. And then you're going to take, we're going to zoom out a little bit here, right click, rotate. You're going to rotate that. We're going to drop that right there. And we're going to grab a ground off the top menu right there. Copy, paste, and paste. So I'm pulling up Excel here off to the side. We're working with picofarads and nanohenries, so in this case, the program already by default has nanohenries and picofarads set up. However, if you're working with some different value, you can go up here to Project Options, Global Units. In this version of AWR, 15 and up, you have to hit Edit Units, and then it'll bring up the Options Default menu for Units, where you'll be able to set up specifically what it is that you want. Hit OK, and you're off to the races. Now, we want to create variables in order to make this a little bit easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit equation. We're going to drop the value here. C package is equal to 0 0.1. Shift enter to create a new line. L bonding, or in this case, they called it L wire. So we're just going to call it L wire to be consistent, 0 0.5, just like that. You can click and then shift click on the other inductor, right click properties brings up the menu and here we're just going to go ahead and type in L wire and then okay you see it updated both oh wait made a little oopsie we're supposed to make that half because it's half on either side click shift click let go of shift right click properties go here C package divided by two like that so you see we've updated this to reflect what the file that we received from the vendor or not the vendor but um from cadence as well using the values from the vendor. obviously i'm leaving this default right so you have to come in here and you have to go through like i said before and and fill out your values so it makes sense for you right for your diode right so this is the so we've updated the underlying simulation now you could set up your frequencies if you need to for your project here the way they do it is they have a whole bunch of measurements already set up here in place. Um, so their, for, their forward bias bench uses one volt for forwarding. The reverse bias uses some like super low um, voltage in order to do that. And, and they basically have everything pretty much set up for you. And specifically, if you want to see the matching, they have the matching here. So you can check all these measurements. And here we'll see S12, S21 forward bias double click on that one and we'll go ahead and hit simulate and it goes ahead and, and gives us the uh, forward bias S S12, S21 version. If you want to see the reverse bias, you can go ahead and see that, see the, re the reverse bias specification. You can make up your own measurements, do your own kind of thing here, uh, simplify or complicate as much as you like. Um, and then if you want to export um, some of these values, what you can go ahead and do is um, you can go ahead to output files over here, right click, 
add output file, give it a second, and then you're going to go ahead and, for example, forward bias test bench. We're going to select that one and port F, S parameter, format. I like to use mag uh, magnitude and angle. Uh, you can set your precision as much as you like, reference impedance. I do not write noise to active source. File type, touchstone. Specifically, you can sweep the frequency here. So you can go over here off to the side, choose all the frequencies that you want to sweep or whatever. And then you can go ahead and click here to choose where you want to export the information. You go ahead and hit save, for example. Uh, it says I don't have permission, of course, because that's in the installation directory. But the point is you can select the directory that you want to write to, and then you go right ahead and hit OK, and it will export the touchstone file, and then you do it again a second time for reverse bias. And then you'll have your basically diode on, diode off setup, and you'll be able to use those files in your other simulations or other designs in order to do this stuff. So effectively, this is how you characterize pin diodes. And I know it was a 21-minute video, and it was a little rambly, but if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll go ahead and, and try to help you as much as I can. And um, catch you next time. Be safe and have a great time using Cadence AWR Microwave Office.